Good morning, Dr. Sager. Good morning, Praveen. How was your preparations for the exam? I have few questions regarding arterial blood gas analysis and hemoglobin oxygen relationship. Sure, go ahead. What is arterial blood gas? Well, the term arterial blood gas refers to measurements of hydrogen ion concentration, partial pressure of carbon dioxide, and partial pressure of oxygen in arterial blood. Measured values for hemoglobin saturation with oxygen, carboxyhemoglobin, and methemoglobin may be included. Many laboratories also report calculated values of oxygen saturation, bicarbonate concentration, and base excess. These measurements assess oxygenation, ventilation, and acid base status. Why are blood gas samples transported on ice? Well, metabolism by blood cells continue in the syringe until the sample is analyzed, causing a decrease in PO2, an increase in PCO2, and a decrease in pH. This can be diminished by transport of the sample in an ice water slush unless the sample is analyzed within 10 minutes. The metabolic effects on the blood sample are caused primarily by the activity of leukocytes. In patients with leukocytosis with WBCs more than 100,000, the PaO2 on the blood sample may decrease very quickly, which is called leukocyte larceny. It may be impossible to accurately determine the PaO2 of patients in extreme leukocytosis and in vivo methods, for example, pulse oximetry may be more valuable in those situations. Why is heparin used in blood gas syringes? Coagulation of the blood sample must be avoided because clots interfere with the function of the blood gas analyzer. Dry lyophilized lithium heparin is used so that electrolyte measurements can be performed using the blood gas sample. Moreover, dry heparin reduces the risk of pre-analytic errors caused by dilution of the sample with the volume of the liquid form of heparin. The PO2 and the PCO2 of liquid heparin are virtually the same as the PO2 and PCO2 of ambient air, which is 150 millimeter mercuries and 0 millimeter mercuries respectively at sea level. Heparin dilution causes the measured PCO2 of the sample to decrease and the PO2 of the sample to move towards 150 millimeters mercury. The measured PO2 increases if the true value is less than 150 millimeter mercury and decreases if the true value is more than 150 millimeters mercury. High concentrations of heparin are acidic with a pH of less than 7 and lower the pH of the sample. If liquid heparin is used, its effects can be minimized by using only enough to fill the dead volume of the needle and syringe. Why must arterial blood gas samples be obtained anaerobically? A common pre-analytic error related to blood gases is contamination of the sample with room air. At sea level, air has a PO2 of about 150 millimeter mercury and a PCO2 of about 0 millimeters mercury. Thus, if the sample is contaminated with air, the measured PO2 of the sample increases if the true value is less than 150 millimeter mercury and decreases if the true value is more than 150 millimeter mercury. Contamination of the sample with air lowers the PCO2 of the sample with a resultant increase in pH. Why can't venous blood gas be used instead of AVGs? Arterial blood gases reflect lung function. Venous blood gases reflect the adequacy of tissue oxygenation and tissue carbon dioxide clearance. A low mixed venous PO2, less than 35 millimeters of mercury, reflect tissue hypoxia and may be the result of decreased oxygen delivery or increased tissue oxygen uptake. Venous PO2 is typically much lower than arterial PO2, and there is often little relationship between the two. For example, the mixed venous PO2 may be low and the arterial PO2 may be high if cardiac output is reduced, lung function is normal, and the FiO2 is high. Normally, the mixed venous PCO2 is only slightly greater than the arterial PCO2. However, venous PCO2 depends on blood flow and in cases of low blood flow, example cardiac arrest, the mixed venous PCO2 may be high 
even though the arterial PCO2 is normal or decreased. What determines hemoglobin oxygen saturation? The saturation of hemoglobin is determined by the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve, for which oxygen saturation is a function of PO2. The affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen is high at high saturations and less at lower saturations. This effect facilitates oxygen loading in the lungs, where the PO2 is high, and oxygen unloading to the tissues, where the PO2 is low. The position of the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve is not fixed. Factors that shift the curve to the left increase the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen, and factors that shift the curve to the right decrease the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. Why is oxygen dissociation curve sigmoidal in shape? The quaternary structure of hemoglobin determines its affinity for oxygen. In the oxyhemoglobin, the globin units are tightly bound in a tense P configuration, which reduces the affinity of the molecule for oxygen. When oxygen is first bound, the bonds holding the globin units are released, producing a relaxed or an R configuration. This exposes more oxygen binding sites. The net result is a 500 fold increase in oxygen affinity. In tissues, these reactions are reversed, resulting in oxygen release. The oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve relates percentage saturation of the oxygen carrying power of hemoglobin abbreviated as SaO2, to the partial pressure of oxygen, or the PO2. This curve has a characteristic sigmoid shape due to the TR configuration interconversion. Combination of the first heme in the hemoglobin molecule with oxygen increases the affinity of the second heme for oxygen, and oxygenation of the second increases the affinity of the third, and so on, so that the affinity of hemoglobin for the fourth oxygen molecule is many times that for the first. Especially note that small changes at low PO2 lead to large changes in SAO2 or saturation. What are the factors that affect the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen? Four important conditions affect the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. The pH, the PCO2, the temperature, and the concentration of 2,3-diphosphoglycerate. A rise in temperature, DPG, PCO2, or a fall in pH shifts the curve to the right. When the curve is shifted in this direction, a higher PO2 is required for hemoglobin to bind to a given amount of oxygen. Conversely, a fall in temperature, DPG, or PCO2, or a rise in pH shifts the curve to the left, and the lower PO2 is required to bind a given amount of oxygen. A convenient index for comparison of such shifts is the P50, which is the PO2 at which hemoglobin is half saturated with oxygen. The higher the P50, the lower the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. The decrease in oxygen affinity of hemoglobin when the pH of the blood falls is called the Bohr effect, which states that at lower pH, as may be seen at the level of the tissues, Hemoglobin would bind to oxygen with less affinity and facilitate oxygen release to the tissues. Thank you, Dr. Sager. You're welcome. Good luck with your exams.